Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Abhishek Bhadra, head of research at Magic Breaks. Uh, welcome to our panel discussion on the Prop Index, uh, which we have prepared for the last uh, quarter of 2024. Joining us today is uh, is uh, Mr. Vishal Doshi, head of sales and marketing, Kanakia Group. Welcome, Vishal. Ms. Ayushi Thank Usher, you. director, Usher Group. Welcome, Ayushi. Rushang Shah, promoter, Hubtown Limited. Welcome, Rushang. Thank you. So uh, just to set the tone for this uh, conversation today, uh, I'm going to give a brief presentation on uh, you know what uh, the key findings that we have uh, figured out in this Prop Index report. And then you know I'm going to open up the forum for further discussion. So on that note, I'm going to share my screen. So Prop Index is a quarterly publication that Magic Bricks uh, comes up with you know every quarter. And we do an assessment of what's happening on the residential market across India and across cities. Uh, the, the key information that uh, you know, one can expect out of this report is your demand and supply analysis, pricing movement, market trends, key projects, key developers, locality-wise data. And all of this information we source using uh, the traffic that we get on our MB portal, which is close to 2 crore monthly visitors and more than 15 lakh listings which are there on the portal, which are listed by developers, agents, and brokers, and end users as well. Right. So I'm going to start with the demand trend. Uh, you know, we are seeing an unprecedented growth in the uh, real estate sector, primarily in the residential sector in the last three years. Uh, 2020 was COVID year. 2020, you know, we, we saw, we still saw a very, uh, you know, uh, low traction on the residential front. Uh, but post that, it's been like a bull run, which is uh, continuing for the last three years. And every year we are seeing a 15 to 20 percent demand increase. Even the last quarter, we saw a 7 percent increase on our portal in terms of uh, searches. Right. So the key factors which are underlying as per the data that we have is uh, there was a lot of pent up demand, which happened uh, you know, during COVID. People wanted to buy, but they were not able to buy because of financial constraints you know, and other uh, constraints. But uh, once that thing got over, uh, you know, they started transacting, they started searching for properties, and that has kind of continued. You know, we are seeing a robust demand cycle, uh, continuing sustained robust cycle over the last three years. Uh, favorable government policies, you know, like uh, boost to infrastructure development, uh, we, we are seeing uh, the government focusing on uh, key areas, uh, you know, even tier two cities and tier one cities, of course, where uh, they are, they are you know, uh, focusing on infrastructure development, uh, connectivity development. And apart from that, you know, the housing for all uh, focus of the government is also there, uh, you know, at the foreground, which is also impacting the positive demand. The third is obviously urbanization wherein we are seeing a lot of migrant population coming into tier one cities uh taking up jobs here which is driving demand they are looking for properties you know and all of this contributed to uh, the demand primarily over the last three years looking at the sizes uh we, we saw that you know over the last couple of years uh, there was a trend wherein three bhks luxury apartments were in vogue in the sense that uh, more than you know, uh, fifty to sixty percent of uh, searches across cities uh, were for three BHKs. But over the last two quarters, we have seen a sudden rise in two BHKs as well. You know, obviously three BHKs still accounts for a sizable chunk of the overall market, but two BHKs uh, seem to be back in demand. Uh, the western cities of Mumbai, Pune, uh, Thane, and of course, couple of uh, southern cities of Bangalore and Chennai are uh, contributing to this uh, two BHK growth. Right. The northern cities, uh, even today, uh, are focusing, uh, so the buyers there are focusing more on the 3BHK side. On the supply side, we are seeing a continuous decline. Uh, you know, inventory levels have been low for the last one year. Uh, although there have been a few project launches which has come up, uh, but, you know, uh, with, with the sheer transactions which are happening, uh, the, the overall inventory is on a decline and, uh, you know, uh, just the last quarter, we saw a slight increase, a slight improvement in the supply, wherein we saw a 1% increase uh, for overall inventory availability pan India. Uh, but, but, you know, it's early times. and uh, uh, But overall, if you look at the last three years, we, we saw a decline. 
on the pricing movement uh, during the covid phase uh, you know we definitely saw that prices did not decline too much they were stable but if you look at the last three years especially in mumbai we have seen uh, you know unprecedented growth in the pricing as well uh, so on an average uh, we have seen a 10 to 15% uh, growth uh, in the average prices in mumbai and similar trends uh, we have seen in uh, you know india as well so uh, you know these were the key trends which uh, uh, are part of the prop index report with that uh, i opened the forum for discussion and uh, clearly uh, we have seen that uh, there is uh, you know a, a definite bull run which is continuing in the market and uh, you know this seems to be uh, uh, kind of uh, at its peak it's peaking every year but what will be interesting to discuss is uh, you know what, what what do each one of you feel you know as to how long this bull run uh, is going to last so if if i may ask uh, vishal to uh, have his opinion on uh, how long do you think this bull run is going to last uh thank you abhishek uh firstly covid actually uh, as we not thought or kind of helped us uh, and made people realize that okay what is the importance of owning your own homes you know and that's how post covid if you have seen this trend of increasing right. you know in the home buying patterns uh residential demand of course was always there and it always be there uh, yeah. but post covid after realizing the actual need of home we have seen this up, up flush and uh, i was surprised to see that there is a, a steep low in supply i i don't agree to this there is equal amount of supply also coming into the market so the supply and demand ratio of residential properties is always uh, be there and the demand of residential properties will always be there so i don't see uh, any any kind of slump in in uh, yeah. residential demand uh, of course the industry always goes through a cycle you know? i mean uh, of, of the highs and the lows uh, probably we have we may have reached the peak or we may still have not reached the peak uh, but uh, it will not go to a level where it you know it will go to a slump where it goes to the Lowest level, which we may have seen in a few years. So yeah, post COVID, I think the demand will be stable now, which is going to be. Uh, new launches will always do good, and then the sustenance will go slow, and then the ready properties, ready to move in properties will always. Great, uh, that's a good point, uh, Vishal. Uh, you know, I agree with you. I mean, supply seems to be uh, uh, at at par with the demand, but you know, if you look at the overall inventory. uh how do you think uh, you know because there has been a lot of sales happening uh and ready to move inventory seems to be going down what is your opinion on that so when you so when we look at the supply side what what, what is the split of uh, under construction and ready to move in inventory so i think when you see uh, whatever data is available is available pan india and we are probably talking about mumbai uh, so there are ready to move in uh, 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 supply there in probably in mumbai or western side of india and equal demand for it because now as i said people are really uh, realize the need for the home uh, uh, i was I, I, one of the data also showed that it there is a kind of a great demand for the bigger apartments or the higher size apartments like a 3 bhk them and we have actually seen that uh, uh, there is a project in pavai where we have launched in 2000 during covid actually and post covid what we realized that there was a higher demand of a 3 bhk apartment than that of a 2 bhk apartment. so we in fact went ahead and changed little tweak our planning for the for the project, for the towers which were not launched and we made more 3 bhks and then 2 bhks so ready to move in apartment is uh, are, i mean are in a great demand and they the demand for this apartment will always be there right uh, so uh, i would like to hear ayushi's opinion on this uh, ayushi how long uh, do you think do you find any similarities in this uh, cycle versus what happened you know in the late 2000s between 2004 and 10 when we saw a similar cycle which kind of reached its peak in 3 years and then it uh, you know busted over the next 3 years so how do you how do you find this particular cycle uh, you know do, do you see any similarities what's your opinion on this i think see this cycle right now is driven by a lot of macroeconomic factors also that is happening in india india as an economy is an aspirational economy more so than ever before today um 
and especially after covid housing has become a necessity it's no longer you know uh, everyone is is wanting to have at least a safe space um, whatever size it may be but they want to have a safe, safe space and something that they can bank on so apart from this being an aspiration to economy i think there are a lot of other macroeconomic factors as well for example the infrastructure uh, upgradation all across the country whether it is the delhi ncr region and its connectivity all the way to the west to the south to the east um mmr as a region it's is seeing almost 30 billion uh, usd uh, fused in in terms of infrastructure upgradation whether it is the metro whether it is the road connectivities all of that in a way is uh, is acting to the real estate demand which means that more and more people are moving into these urban city centers and migration is also at an all time high so i feel till the overall economy is at robust level real estate in um, real estate as a sector will always be moving forward because it goes hand in hand with the overall macroeconomic condition of uh, of the nation as a whole and other than that i think we are also seeing um few few trends where luxury segment what we were talking about the movement from 2 and 3 bhk and specifically in mumbai we are seeing a lot of movement of higher ticket size inventory upwards of even 10 crores we are seeing um, movement like we have seen never before so i think all of that is uh, is on account of the macroeconomic uh, condition the overall uh, capacity buying capacity of uh, individuals is also increasing at a pan india level we have a lot more ultra hnis that are coming out of india um, i think there was a recent report where uh, in I, i think there are about i don't know the exact number but there was a there was a major increase in the number of you know billionaires also coming out of india so i think all in all till the economy is growing i think real estate is a major uh, component of the economy um, as a whole and it will it will keep having its upward cycle Uh, the scale of ups and downs is different to every micro market different to every city because it's very geographical in nature it is right. it's very micro market driven uh, but i think the cycle will continue i'll go to rushank now any opening statements rushank on this point uh no i think i think we've had a pretty good uh, good just good information from from everybody but i think one point i will add is that the 4 5 6 years preceding this current rise were pretty slow um and so according to me the last you know the first two years of this boom were just pretty much a catch up um on a lot of the demand for five years before i think the a lot of the availability got absorbed uh in two years post covid but that was a lot of that was sort of built up over five six seven years and i think now we're seeing the real new demand so to speak uh that is kind of beyond the patent or uh, pent up or latent demand um and then along with that i think if you have another jump in the sensex and nifty um sort of post elections and if that starts touching the sensex starts touching 90000 then i think you will have another round coming up as well so i think more and more we're pretty linked to the rest of the economy as we should be um and so as that improves um you know i think i think we have a pretty decent uh, uh and long road ahead for this this cycle right uh so uh you know with that uh i would also want to discuss uh, what kind of a split are we seeing today on the transactions front i mean do you see a lot of investors coming in the market versus end users i mean what is triggering this growth are people looking for more homes or people are very really confident today in investing and expecting a, a high roi on their investments so what is the end use split investment investors versus end users what do you think of that i i can speak predominantly for mmr um, but i think currently with the gst and stamp duty where it is um i st- i still don't think we are very investor friendly um and so um i think we also have a pretty again we have a pretty large backlog of actual end users um who are still looking to get into the sort of homes they want or or the size of homes that they desire um so yeah to put a number on it i'd say maybe we are 70 75% end user um at least at our level um, okay you know we have also seen that especially in mumbai uh, there is a lot of housing shortage i mean a lot of articles have come up uh, you know even our data says that uh, the total supply is going down uh, you know but even apart from that i mean even if that's happening we are seeing that you know uh, 
prices are rising you know uh, people are very confident today so uh, we see this as a paradox wherein you know the shortage in, shortage is there but uh, you know if you look at the overall market it's still on a boom uh, so any primary reason why this is happening maybe vishal can answer that the yeah, affordability if you see when we say affordability we will have to look at markets in or in the periphery of I mean, mumbai not within mumbai you know because in, in mumbai uh, it, 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 the whatever we are building is not actually affordable you know that's it's mid mid luxury and end luxury food. but otherwise if you see affordability in, in the periphery of like new mumbai or if you go to virar bus circuit or then beyond thane you know that's that's where the 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 supply is also more and the equivalent demand is also more so this within mumbai if the supply will be more but the demand for the rent to move in will be more than the uh, under construction so this is how it will balance it out so if 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 you are looking for an affordable sex segment then you have to look beyond mumbai uh, on the periphery got it and our data also clearly indicates magic bricks data indicates that the western suburbs of mumbai including malar kandivali and other areas especially andheri east jogeshwari east and borivali and the isar these are the key areas where a lot of searches are coming so is it aligning with what's happening on the ground in the, in the on the transactions front uh, i mean if uh, you know uh, ayushi can you uh, give your points on this I mean, I I think uh, the entire belt from Vasai Virar to Eater Property um, is is not in Delhi so much. There are there are a lot of luxury complexes in Delhi, uh, but I I feel that sort of falls in the affordable category still uh, in Mumbai upwards of especially um, Kandi Valley, Bori Valley, Mira Road, all of that segment. Um, plus, they are seeing huge infrastructure upgrade with the metro line, kind of starting out from there. Connectivity to the central suburbs, connectivity to the airport, um, and it's. I feel that that is one of the most affordable regions of uh, Mumbai uh, on the western segment, if we if we were to call it so. And they are very very established neighborhoods. The the western segment of Mumbai, they're historically. very very affluent culturally rich uh, neighborhoods uh, of mumbai which kind of fall um, formulates uh, mumbai's working population so i think it's very much in sync with what your data probably shows as well it and uh, how do you think the uh, you know uh, investors can what kind of returns can investors expect today uh, if they invest in uh, a small apartment say a 2 bhk versus a 3 bhk so are smaller apartments more investment friendly in terms of giving higher returns or uh, should it they be based on what micro market so i i feel that it, it depends on what micro market or which particular location there uh, if 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 i consider say power is a micro market then between 2 and 3 which the 3 which case are giving more returns uh, because they they just this need of a larger space but if we if you're talking about affordability and then if you go beyond mumbai in the outskirts of mumbai then there is a great demand for one and two pitches you know where where uh, the affordable segment actually comes into play so it depends on what micro market uh, the project is and then uh, uh, otherwise i personally feel that irrespective of two and three bhk or a larger or smaller apartments the returns will the rate, the rate of returns will be equal in any one particular micro market differing to different micro market or a very interesting uh, point vishal uh, so if i look at the current context uh, obviously the economy is doing good gdp is uh, you know at a very high point i mean it's it's probably the it's seen the highest growth uh, in the last one and a half years and uh, you know interest rates uh, seem to be constant the last uh, uh, meeting of the monetary policy said that the interest rates are going to be constant over the next few quarters uh, what is uh, you know uh, your opinion and this is for rishank on how interest rates uh, are going to determine the fate of the market going forward yeah so again i think um, i think a couple of things i think international interest rates um, become very critical for us as well like i mentioned at the start i think mm-hmm. how the stock market is impacted um, has a sort of disproportionate uh, impact on the sale velocity at least in sort of bombay and the luxury segment um, and so as international rates uh, go up or go down um i think we have impact um in our stock market and therefore that impacts prices as far as indian rates are concerned 
um i think the rbi has done a great job so you know we we are one of the few places with inflation under control and and our customer base is generally used to 8 9 10 10% home loan rates right so as the rest of the world is kind of panicking for us a 7 8 9 9% home loan rate is is considered completely viable uh, and up and our houses are priced accordingly um and so sometimes people always mention american prices or hong kong prices relative to bombay prices and so we price our houses according to 8 9 10 10% interest rate they price it according to a 2 or 3% interest rate so if you look at the delta between our worst times and our best times where actually our interest rate is below um what it was maybe even 5 6 7 years ago when we were at 12% whereas in the rest of the world the interest rate is significantly higher so i think we have a little bit of leeway and if inter- inflation is under control i don't see rbi increasing interest rates so currently again that's i think a positive uh, tailwind that the sector has at least as far as india is concerned so yeah so that means it's so you know the the market is not very sensitive to interest rate changes if i may put it that way i i think at the current levels of interest rate i think the market can absorb it now if that was to change drastically one way or the other um we hmm. see that would impact but if it stays in this band i i don't think at least the indian consumer uh, seems to have too much of an issue got it uh, you know i want to now talk about uh, i know ayushi mentioned that uh, there is a lot of uh, focus from international investors in india uh, so at the ground level uh, what kind of uh, interest are you seeing from nri investors and are they looking at buying properties uh, from an investment perspective or they want to move into the city from an end use perspective uh, how do you see that trend coming up i mean do you see an increase because uh the data that magic bricks has shows that on a year on year we are seeing a 15% increase in searches by nris you know especially for properties in mumbai and maybe a couple of uh, southern cities of bangalore and chennai so uh why is this uh, you know what is the trigger for this uh, trend uh ayushi can you throw some light on this yeah um i can i can talk from an mmr perspective i feel uh, two things in most of the nri people looking to buy assets here uh, from from my understanding it's more of an investment or otherwise uh, they're looking at buying something for their parents or some family members that they have uh, here in the city and you know they they feel it's the right time to buy real estate here so what they're looking for is a lifestyle project they really want that upgradation in lifestyle that's what they put heavy emphasis on and the second thing is probably you know some scope of appreciation so we see um, a lot of demand coming into a lot of peripheral markets also now because the investors feel that um, there will be a lot of appreciation with the increased connectivity coming into those markets so that that's what um, i think is happening got it got it uh interesting uh so vishal uh, you had mentioned that you know uh, some of the peripheral areas like thane and navi yeah. mumbai which are essentially known as the satellite cities of mumbai they are driving demand and a lot of new projects are coming up so any specific localities within these uh, cities or or within these regions where you see a uh, lot of uh, launches coming up and you know migration happening uh any insights on this uh, new mumbai and panvel you know these are the cities because of the new airport coming up in uh, in mumbai well. this is i mean the the move the things have moved there atal say to connecting uh, mumbai to new mumbai again yeah uh, it's a lot of infrastructure development happening so uh, and of course thane in fact thane is most sort of central located if you see from connecting every aspect of uh, maharashtra so it is it is uh, accessible from mumbai it is accessible from pune same way navi mumbai so both of this uh, areas you know kind of have actually grown and will grow multifold uh, if you talk about western suburbs then vasai virai belt this this and mira bhaiyan belt of course mira bhaiyan belt is also now reached to a point where uh, people are talk, started talking about mid luxury not actually affordable but then going ahead was a viral get is something which is again a uh, very kind of uh, uh, upcoming up trend a lot of launches happening in this market which is again affordable uh, but if you see uh, navi mumbai and panvel because of the new airport coming and these are the hottest destination as far as the new launches are coming or the migrations got it uh, uh 
you know now uh, if i if i look at the market obviously it's uh, you know uh, it, it's driven by investors and end users and i would say that it's it's like level you know like 50 50% each so uh, from a rental perspective rental yield perspective which areas in bombay do you think offers good uh, returns to landlords uh, you know who are looking at uh, investing in the rental market uh, uh, rishant if if you may want to answer that yeah um, i think again i think generally speaking people who are really interested in the rental market would maybe skew a little bit commercial and retail i think there's still a lot of uh, demand and a lot of good supply with good tenants in those markets at various price points obviously sure. um but i think if you're talking purely resi um i think resi is still predominantly skewed towards cap appreciation or capital appreciation as a form of return um but again if you just insist on residential resi for the purpose of leasing i think generally smaller tends to be better because you'll have better tenants and it'll be vacant for lesser time and so on and so forth so a two or three bedroom in sort of the original affordable segment uh, sub 7 800 square, uh, square foot is probably your best bet uh, again unless you're really into the luxury product maybe in certain specific bandra west or south bombay areas but i think that's a that's not really achievable for most people um so i think for most people if you're looking at sort of sub 800 square foot two bedrooms it's a pretty good product that rents pretty well um especially if you're near schools colleges mm-hmm. um you know centers of sort of uh, commerce or bkc and parel and so on and so forth um thana for example has a lot of new development it i roli does so basically if you're around those centers and your flat size is kind of reasonably sized i think your return can be pretty good relative to other resi assets it is very very insightful uh, rishank uh so now uh, i would want to know uh, i mean we we discussed that uh, you know uh, the market is still skewed towards 3 bhks but uh, compact apartments uh, seem to be on the rise you know uh, is it is it uh, so i mean if we talk of the rise of 2 bhks uh which is again uh, kind of uh, on the rise which were, which was there previously 5 6 years back and then in the middle 3 bhks went up now also it's on the rise but 2 bhks seem to be back in vogue so uh, any reason why 2 bhks are still uh, there in the market and people are looking at 2 bhks you know is it purely from a return perspective or is it because uh, there is more supply of 2 bhks uh, so w- what could be the key trigger point for this uh, ayushi i think first and foremost affordability plays um plays a big role because most 2 bhks are around between 1.25 1.3 to 2 crores depends on the location that you're in um so i think that plays a big role second is changing family dynamics a lot of nuclear families so they don't want to uh, they want to make sure that there's best utilization of space um so it's usually a 2 bhk serves the purpose for a nuclear family um roshan spoke about rentals and you know sub 700 800 um, as we said works well for the rental and migrant population coming into uh, mumbai as well so suppose if they are not looking as an end user they can it's easy to rent out um, rent out the 2 bhks and i think 2 bhks are probably probably a good in between you know it's it's not too compact it's not too large again the affordability factor plays a major role it's it's a good in between for an expensive market like mmr for sure great uh, so i think with that we come to the end of this discussion uh, i would like to hear closing comments from each one of you uh, vishal uh, what do you think of the market and how is it going to shape up over the next uh, few months if you see usually the last two quarters of uh, the year are usually better than the first two quarters you know that's how the demand has been throughout throughout the past history so uh, we have seen good quarters uh, which ended last year good it be the last quarter uh, 24 have just started and uh, uh, you know we we will see an up, upgrade new launches there will be a uh, new uh, new sector opening up and new launches happening in the market so going forward of course we are very bullish about 2425 this year it uh, rishan can we have your view please 
I think kind of what we said at the start of the conversation, I think the demand's holding. I think most of the macroeconomic factors are good. I think just purely the first quarter of the new year because of elections, um, I think it's a little bit of a holding pattern. Uh, but I think if everything goes the way it goes, and I think specifically from developers, I think if 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 we don't take the prices up too high as a group, so you kind of maintain a little bit of of sanity um, in in our own expectations. I think the demand is good, and I think the demand seems to want to hold um, as long as all of us don't get too too carried away, um, which is which is good. Aishi, can we have your uh, opinion? I think it's one of the best times for real estate right now. Overall, uh, demand is good. Um, the every quarter we are seeing, you know. Some quarter, the demand is at an all-time high. Some quarter, the registration is at an all-time high. So we're constantly seeing all of these statistics coming to the forefront. Um, the basic remains that, you know, if... Um, but today, I think we have to know that consumers are smart. They want transparency. They want developers and brands that they can trust. So till you are delivering your uh, projects in accordance with the commitments, in accordance with a lot of um, grounding that RERA has put in and uh, you are making sure that you're doing all of that in the stipulated timeline or, you know, developers, uh, sorry, consumers will choose you as a brand and that is a trust that you develop uh, over time with them. Right. I think we had a very insightful discussion today that brings us to the end of, uh, the, you know, this webinar. Uh, I'd like to thank each one of you for joining in, taking out the time and sharing your insightful uh, you know, points with us. Uh, thank you once again for, for joining the discussion. Have a good day.